Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Rick Frage. I'm the sales manager at SF Tech Incorporated. On behalf of our team, I'd like to welcome you today uh, to this webinar, our eighth webinar, um, about designing, um, <clears throat> designing flat plate um, with CSI uh, safe software. Uh, this webinar is presented by Dr. Ahmed Salama, uh, who will be uh, explaining the details of uh, how to, to maneuver with the software. Uh, so a little bit about Dr. Ahmed Salama. Dr. Ahmed Salama is a structural uh, design expert at SF Tech Incorporated in Montreal, Canada. He has served as a bridge engineer at the Egyptian Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation, where he supervised different construction phases of several uh, different bridges. Later on, he worked uh, as a bridge design engineer uh, for short span bridges that were constructed over the Nile River. Uh, after, afterwards, he decided to continue his education. So he came to Canada and he continued his PhD studies at the University of Sherbrooke under the supervision of Dr. Brahim Ben Mukran. During his uh, PhD studies, Dr. Salama uh, tested full scale edge slab uh, column connections, which were extracted from a prototype of GFRP RC flat plate parking structure. These tests aimed, uh, aimed at uh, simulating the real case of such connections, quantifying the behavior and strength of such connections, and finally introducing new formula uh, for the FRP design standard in Canada and USA, uh, which are the, the, the ACI uh, 440.1R-15 for the USA and the CSA SO, uh, CSA S80612 <clears throat> for the Canadian standards. So Dr. Ahmed Salam also contributed to the CSA certificate tests of different FRP materials for different manufacturers in Canada, USA, Germany, uh, and China, under, of course, the supervision of uh, Professor Brahim Ben Mukran at the University of Sherbrooke. So um, this webinar, um, I'll be doing the introduction. Um, <clears throat> we will discuss a little bit of uh, some field applications of uh, fiberglass rebar. Uh, then I'll hand the mic uh, to Dr. Ahmed to, to do some analysis and explain some analysis of GFRP RC flat plates for parking garages. And we uh, also will do a design uh, of GFRP uh, flat plates for parking garages. We have uh, our branded product uh, are mostly designed in Canada here and then manufactured in China uh, by Shandong Safety Industry in Shandong, who are uh, specialized in the production and manufacturing of fiber reinforced polymer products. So we work with national and international engineering firms. We work with them uh, through the design process. Uh, we help them design and, and get acquainted with the uh, FRP standards, whether they are in Canada or the US. We try to focus our energy and efforts on uh, parking facilities, water treatment plants, and retaining walls. Our focus basically um, is on the GFRP uh, bar applications and uh, mostly mostly there is the bars. However, we do have other products like the, uh, the sheets and the, uh, and the AR mix for the concrete mixes. So FRP material comp uh, composition is simple. Uh, as we can see here, uh, it's basically the fiber and resin, which is a polymer. And also we have an interface between them and the, uh, they are connected together and, and put together through a process of protrusion. So what you are seeing here is a microscopic view of an FRP bar. So the different types of FRP and how they compare to steel. As uh, most of you know already, we have different types of FRP. We have more than what's listed here. We have glass, aramid, carbon, basalt. However, those are the three main or more popular uh, fibers. And if you compare them to steel, you will notice two things, that glass being the, the, the least strong between the three, the aramid and carbon, is already two or three times has a, a better resistance to stress than steel. 
So it has a three times the tensile properties of steel. And also the second thing you will notice is that they are linear up to failure while steel yields, it has ductility. So our product, um, we are capable of producing different types of FRP products. We produce uh, FRP bars, spirals, connectors, bent bars, and, and whatever shapes you would need. The most popular, of course, of these products is definitely the bars. However, the most popular fiber is the glass out of, out of the three listed before. And the reason being is that, as I explained before, it's already, uh, it has already doubled the tensile or tripled the tensile strength, strength of steel. However, it's the cheapest in terms of cost, in terms of budget, compared to carbon and aramid. So that's why GFRP glass fiber uh, polymers are the most popular in the market today. Some of the advantages of um, SFT bars or GFRP bars instead of steel or over steel. Basically, it has a longer service life because of its uh, corrosion resistance. So it, um, it has an improved durability in harsh marine conditions. So it's perfect for ports, construction, or any, any building or walls that are whether in touch with the marine, with the water, or very close to considered marine environment. There usually you have more corrosion. The advantageous corrosion resistance, it goes back to that. So if you compare to steel, steel would corrode and, and FRP in general does not corrode no matter what. It has a greater tensile strength as we saw before. Uh, it is at least three times stronger than steel. Um, however, even though it's stronger than steel, it is one to fifth the, the weight uh, of steel, which makes it easier to work with, safer and faster. Uh, the fact that it is corrosion proof uh, makes it perfect for uh, chemical environments also. So if you're doing uh, mining industry is a perfect example, pipelines um, or uh, water purification stations and so on. And finally, it's neutral to electric and magnetic disturbance, which makes it perfect also for applications like airports, military applications, uh, MRI rooms in hospitals and so on. Some examples of FRP, we have a lot of projects across the world. We chose a few to show you. One of the projects is here in Canada, which is um, the first waffle slab designed with FRP bars, uh, with SFT uh, bars. So that was built in uh, Nova Scotia, in Halifax, Nova Scotia last year. And those are some pictures of it. Also, um, it can be used for slab on grades. It's a perfect, if it's an unstructural slab, it's a one-to-one -one replacement, no need for complications, and it, it will save you a lot of money compared to steel not only on the price of bar to bar, but also in terms of labor and, and everything involved, uh, delivery and so on. Another project uh, to show is, this is an IBM building. Uh, so they did cast on site walls and they used our uh, precast, sorry, our FRP bars. This project was built in China. And uh, to the right is a retaining wall built for the city of Montreal. They designed a retaining wall to dump uh, some snow in, in winter for the, de for the de icing operations and so on. So they created this uh, retaining wall. And what's better than FRP to resist all these de icing harsh chemicals that are uh, added on the street? So that's why they use our SFT bars. So that's it. That's my role. Uh, I'll hand the mic to Dr. Ahmed to explain a little bit more about how to design flat plates with, uh, with the CSI safe software. Sir Ahmed, mic is yours. Thank you so much, Rick, for this great introduction. And um, hello again to everyone here uh, in our webinar. Uh, in the next slides, I'm going to talk about a numerical example for a flooring slabs of two-story parking garage. And this flooring slab of two-story parking garage is located here in Quebec, Canada. Um, as we see here, this is um, the dimensions we receive, you know, from um, the guy who designed the slab with the steel bars. And uh, they asked to uh, design this slab with FRB in order to see the difference in the cost and uh, other stuff. So we received the dimensions uh, of the slab uh, thickness um, of 250 millimeter. And here, um, the loads are very, very high. So uh, the designer decided to put a drop panel around the column, as we see here, 
The thickness of the drop panel is 200 millimeter. Uh, all columns we have here in, um, in this uh, flooring slab um, is uh, 300 by 600 millimeter. So, uh, and also the wall thickness. In the boundary here of the slab, we have walls, uh, and you can see the walls here with, um, with the blue color. So all the boundary here, we have here wall um, on this boundary. The thickness of this wall is 250 millimeter also. So what I'm going to do is to um, create the DXF file as known by all engineers who are using the CSI uh, safe software. Uh, here it should be CSI safe. So um, the first thing I um, uh, put, uh, you know, I created the model on, um, on CSI safe software. And after that, uh, I'm going to talk in the next slide about the input data. So here, the slab thickness, I put the slab thickness 250 millimeters the drop panel uh, defined here the slab with drop panel and the columns wall thickness so let us see how i did that actually we received some data we have given data for this slab so the concrete strength for the slabs equal 35 mba based on the concrete strength i'm going to calculate the concrete properties you know uh, like the elastic modulus of concrete EC. EC, according to the Canadian standard, 823.3 equals 4,500 by the square root of uh, FC dash. So EC equals 2,000, uh, 26,622 MBA, and the FCR equals 0.6 by the square root of um, FC dash also, so uh, FC, F crack here um, equals 3.55 MBA. Alpha one and beta one, the factors um, of flexure. So here alpha one and beta one can be calculated using this equation based on the given FC dash. So by substituting FC dash in this equation and that one, so here we have alpha one equals 0.8 and beta one equals 0.88. As we talked before on our plan, the concrete dimensions for the slab and the slab thickness equals 250 millimeter. The drop panel thickness equals 200 and the clear concrete cover for the bars equal 30 millimeter. And actually we're gonna check this one also uh, based on the bar um, we are using because um, uh, the clear concrete cover in the Canadian standard the CSA S806 is, um, is a factor in the bar, diam uh, bar diameter. So if you are going to use um, bar diameter of 10 millimeter, bar diameter of 15, 20, so, the concrete cover will be uh, it changing, gonna change from a value to another value. And also the designer give us, you know, the service and ultimate loads. And actually, uh, because we are here designing this uh, building in Canada, so the loads were specified according to the National Building Code of Canada, NBCC to the year 2015. The dead load here equals 5.15, live load equals 12, and you can get this value from uh, the National Building Code according to the type of the structure. So if the type of the structure is um, like residential building, it, this value will be less. This value is very, very high, you know, because we are uh, talking about parking garage and uh, heavy loads. I'm and also here we have a snow loads and also this value was calculated according to the, the equation in the National Building Code of Canada. So here the snow load equals 3.44 kilonewton per meter square and the rail load equals 0.4 kilonewton per meter square. So um, as known, we have a lot of loading cases, but we are going, going to select the, the factored load case, uh, factored load combination and the service load combination that will govern our design. So here, WF, W factored, 
equals 1.25 times W dead load, which is 5.15, plus 1.5 by W live load, which is 12 kilonewton per meter squared. And here we are going to add a part for the snow load. So the snow load here is uh, 3.44, and no factors here will be used for uh, the snow loads. So it will be one. So finally, the WF equals 27.9 kilonewton per meter square. While here, the WS, which is W service load, uh, will be equal W dead load, W live load, and a part of snow load. So W S equals 17.12 kilonewton per meter square. At this point, we are going to assume some data in order to go in our design. So for the reinforcements that we are going to use in our slab, uh, actually as a preliminary suggestion, I suppose to use uh, GFRB SFT bar number seven, number six, and number five. And between the brackets here, you are going to see the bar diameter for each one. Here is the bar diameter of number seven is 22 millimeter, number six, 20 millimeter, and number five is 16 millimeter. Also here, you can see the, uh, the area, the cross-sectional area, you know, uh, for number seven, number six, number five. And actually this area is taken from uh, the Canadian standard S807 uh, for the specification of FRB bars. And actually uh, in our factory, uh, we are respecting to have bar diameter with the, the nominal diameter of this bar like 22 millimeter for number seven for number six 20 millimeter for number five also 16. so finally here we have also the tensile properties and this tensile properties in terms of the ultimate strength the elastic modulus and ultimate strain this uh, properties were determined according to the canadian standard the csa is 807 after testing like three lots from each bar size. So we have here for number seven, we should test three lots, different lots from uh, each bar size for number seven, number six, number five, in order to have these values. And um, as we see here, um, the tensile strength is uh, 1,250, elastic modulus 65,000 MBA, and the ultimate strain equals 0 0.0185 and we are gonna use this data in the design. So here, as we see, after creating the model in the, uh, the CSI safe uh, 2016. And by the way, this program can be used for design of slabs, beams, foundations, and also for post tensioned concrete. If you have both tension concrete slab or other stuff like this, this is a suitable program you can use from as we do in our office. So as we see here, this is the 3D view uh, of the model. So here we have the walls on the boundaries, as I mentioned in uh, my first slide for the for this example. And here we have the column with the drop panel. We have the drop panel slab here and we have the column. And uh, we have also the slab of 250 millimeter thickness. So after doing, um, after creating, you know, the model, we need to check that everything is fine and um, the thickness of the walls, the slabs, everything uh, should be uh, defined properly as uh, given by the designer or as assumed by you as a designer. So after getting to the analysis step using the CSI safe software, we have our slabs and we can get from the program the moment distribution in X direction. And actually you will see in the program M11. So M11 here means the moment distribution in the X direction. So as we see here, we have some colors and these colors give us the value of the bending moment distribution in our uh, flooring slabs. So as we see here, this color, which is the most common one, is ranging from zero to 100. So this color, I mean this one, as we see here, this one is ranging from zero to 100. And actually this um, color representing the moments, the positive moments in the middle is bands. Here we have the column. And here also we have the column. This moment here 
is the negative moment over our columns. However, the other parts, as I said, the most common color here is for the positive moment, which is ranging from zero to 100 kilonewton meter. And after that, we're gonna see here we have a spot, and this spot is ranging from 100 to 200, which is the next level. So what I'm going to do here is to take a range of 100 kilonewton for the most uh, parts of the slab, and we're gonna check how many bars that I'm going to use to design this slab. And for this spot, I'm going to try to put additional reinforcements. But if I'm going to design this slab totally, you know, for this higher value, it will cost us high and high value of money, high and high value, you know, of, uh, of time also. So what I'm going to do is to unify this area with a uniform mesh. And for this one, I will put additional reinforcements. So let us talk. Now we talk about the moment distribution in X direction. So let us say, talk about the moment distribution in Y direction. Uh, in the program, you will see, um, you know, the term of M22. So here, as before, here we have a color. And as we see here, this color is the most, you know, is the most common one here in the flooring slabs. And this also for the positive moment. So here, the positive moment is ranging also from zero to 100. So it seems that we are going to have a uniform mesh in both directions. So we are going to take M ultimate positive for the uniform mesh to be 100 kilo Newton. However, we can see here another spot which is a little bit higher, it's um, heavy green. And this heavy green area is ranging from 100 to 200. And also we have here a heavy green area, which is ranging also from 100 to 200. As um, I said in the previous slide, we are going to put additional reinforcement in this area in order to cover the higher moment that is ranging from 100 to 200. So, in step number four, we are going to select the bottom reinforcement in X and Y direction. And as we see, the most common spots in the uh, X and Y direction carrying uh, the range from zero to 100. So I took uh, the range uh, 100 kilonewton uh, meter for the moment. So we are going to see how many bars are needed to cover this moment. So as I did here, uh, we are going to assume a bottom uniform reinforcement mesh, six bars number five. And number five here is 16 millimeter. So I'm going to use six bars per meter. So six by the area of one bar. So the AF here total will be 1,194 millimeter square. And also we need to estimate the effective flexural depths in both orthogonal directions. In the X direction, we have a slab thickness minus cover minus 0.5 D bar. So we are going to use 16 millimeter. So D, 0.5 D bar will be eight millimeter. And we have here the cover of 30 millimeters. So 250 minus 38, it will give us 212 millimeter. However, DY will be TS minus cover minus 1.5 D bar. And DY will be 196 millimeter. As I mentioned in um, uh, our first webinar, for uh, the design of um, uh, flat blades uh, using um, uh, GFRB bars, I mentioned that we should check the failure mode. So here we have uh, the area reinforcement in uh, one meter, and we have um, the depth, the flexural depth in X direction and in Y direction. So we are going to use this data in order to calculate the flexural reinforcement ratio in X and also the flexural reinforcement in Y. The flexural reinforcement ratio here in X equals 0.0056 and in Y 0.0061. And in order to check the failure modes, we, we need to calculate the balanced flexural reinforcement ratio. And actually the balanced flexural reinforcement ratio 
according to the Canadian code CSA S8 or 6 can be calculated using this equation. In this equation, we have all data known. We have alpha one, we calculated before, and beta one, phi C and phi FRB. And here we have FC dash and FF ultimates, epsilon concrete ultimate and ultimate tensile strength. So finally, the flexural reinforcement ratio balanced one will be 0 0.0027. And and as we know from our previous webinars, that if the flexural reinforcement ratio, which is this one or this one, is greater than the balanced flexural reinforcement ratio, so the section is compression controlled section. And actually, the compression controlled section is the most preferable section in the case of using GFRB bars or any kind of FRB bars. So here we check the failure mode and it's okay. Continuing to the selection of the bottom reinforcements, we are going to calculate the neutral axis depths. So here we are going to equalizing the, uh, the compression force with the tension force. So the compression force from concrete will equal the tension force from the GFRB bars. So here, the compression force will be this turn and the tension force will be this one. And we have here C, which is a neutral axis depth. And also we have C on the other side. So finally, C equals 45.95 millimeters. Right now, we can calculate the MR. MR here is the resistance moment. The resistance moment can be calculated easily using this equation. So here, the resisting moment equals 141, while the factored moment, if we remember, it's 100. So here we have 141, so it's, it's a little bit higher, but it's safe. So here also we have a check for C over D. C over D equals, should be greater than 7 over 7 plus 2000 by the epsilon FRB ultimate. So here C over D is greater than this value, which is okay. In step number five, I would like to talk about the selection criteria for the top reinforcement in the X and Y direction. Uh, as known, the, the top reinforcements uh, will be selected in order to uh, cover the negative moment in our slab. So here we are using uh, the same criteria as I explained for the bottom reinforcement in order to select the top reinforcements. And we are going to add additional bars over the column uh, as we did uh, for the bottom reinforcement if it requires to be added. Sometimes when you design this kind of slabs, no need to add the additional reinforcement for the top and the bottom. But um, you know it's rare to um, to add the bottom um, additional reinforcement, but it's normal to add top um, additional uh, reinforcements in uh, in many many cases that I did before. So I I I already you know uh, face a lot of cases for adding additional top reinforcement. So now we designed our slab in x and y direction and selected the bottom reinforcement. So here we need to check the serviceability limit state in order to make um, our design completed. So um, as I mentioned also in uh, the theoretical webinars I did before, how we can check the serviceability limit state for any flexural member. So here for the serviceability limit state, we have two steps. The first step here is called the stress and strain limitation. So we are going to check the stress and the strain in the used bar under service loads. From the analysis, MS, which is the service moment, equals 55.60 for one of the uh, critical sections. Here we have as a flexural reinforcement ratio, 
and also NF, which is the ratio between the elastic modulus of the FRB, which is EF, to the elastic modulus of the concrete. So NF here equals 2.424. So rho F by NF will be 0 0.012. So we are going to calculate factor called K. So K will be depends on uh, rho F by NF. So by substituting the value of rho F by NF, you will get the value of the factor K. And here also, we are going to calculate J, which is one minus K over three. So J here equals 0 0.95, which is the uh, lever arm between the compression and tension forces. So here in this equation, we are going to calculate the stress. So FFS here is the stress in the bar under full service loads. So by substituting with the moment, and here is the area of reinforcement area, AF. Here is J, which is the lever arm. And here is D, 212 here is D. So FFS here equals 233 MBA. The code requires that the stress in the bar under full service loads to be less than or equal 25% of the ultimate strength. So here, FFS equals 233, which is less than 312 MBA. So this one is okay. Actually, the elastic modulus of our rebar is known from testing and we calculated right now the stress. So we know the stress under full service load. We know the elastic modulus. So easily we can calculate the strain. So here the strain will be the stress over the elastic modulus. So here the strain equals 0 0.0036. And actually this value is greater than 0 0.015. So when you have this value is greater than 0 0.0015, you should go to the step number two in the checking of the serviceability limit state. However, if you are designing a concrete structure with FRB bars and your ultimate strain under full service load is less than this value, so no need to go to the next step. However, when you have the strain in your bar under full service load greater than 0 0.0015, so it is the time to check a factor called Z. So Z is the crack width parameter. The crack width parameter Z can be calculated using this equation. And we have two limitations of Z. This limitation for the exterior exposure. We have here parking garage, and you know, uh, this one will be outside, you know, uh, you will not have any, it's called like exterior exposure. You will have exterior exposure. So for the exterior exposure, uh, you will compare this limit by 38,000. However, when you have uh, interior exposure, this factor, equals 42,000 Newton per millimeter. As we see here, we have some factors to be determined in order to get the value of Z. So here we have KB, and KB is a factor depending on the service finishing of the bar. So here we are going to use hand-coated GFRB bars. So the factor KB will be 0.8. So here ES, and here is EF. So ES is the elastic modulus of the steel and EF is the elastic modulus of FRB. So here is 200 over 65. FFS, which is the stress under full service loads. So the stress from the previous calculations equal to 133. DC, DC is a factor which equals the TS minus D. So the slab thickness minus the effective flexural depth. So DC equals 38. According to the code limitations, 
DC should be less than or equal 50. So if you are going to calculate DC and found that DC is greater than 50, so forget about the calculated value and use 50. So here DC equals 38, so we are going to take it 38. And also here for the factor A, the factor A here equals two by B by DC over the number of bars. So here, this one should be 38, not 40. This one should be, uh, I'm sorry for this mistake. This one should be 38. So this one, um, uh, the factor A, which is the last factor we are going to calculate in this equation. The factor A equals two by B. B is the width of the strip. So we took uh, a strip of one meter width. DC calculated from this equation, and we assumed using six bars number five. So number of six in one meter is in our strip is six. So here A equals 12,667 millimeter. So by substituting using the above, uh, the previously explained and uh, the calculated terms here, the value of Z equals 46,511. And actually this value is greater than 38,000 millimeter, uh, Newton over millimeter. So this one is unsafe. And also this one should be greater than. So this one is unsafe. So we need to make it safe in order to have uh, a safe design. Without serviceability limited state, it checks your design is nothing. So I decided here to increase the number of bars to seven bars. Again, we are going to calculate the stress. The stress here equals 198. And this value is less than 0.25 by the ultimate strength of the bar, ultimate tensile strength. So this one is OK. And the factor A in the Z equation here is a change to be 10,857 uh, 10, millimeter square. So again, by substituting with the new values of FFS and A, the value of Z factor equals 36,283. And actually this value is less than 38,000. So our design right now is safe. So thank you so much for continuing with me until uh, reaching the end of the presentation. And actually, I would like to thank um, uh, Rick and other colleagues uh, whom uh, contributed um, to SFTech. And um, thanks a lot to all of you again.